the ultimate expedition vehicle. Four-wheel drive, off-road wheels and tyres, fully appointed for off-grid living. 200 litre water tanks, two 200 amp hour lithium batteries, two fridges and even a washing machine. Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at Bramham Park with this very, very special motorhome. Well, is it a motorhome, is it a camper van? No, it's an expedition vehicle, a vehicle for going off-road, going anywhere you want to go. Just look at these spotlights, the light bar on the roof, that's for when you're seriously off-road and you really need to see where you're going. These come on with your main beam headlights, but this Mercedes 319 base vehicle is of course the four-wheel drive. Look at the stance of it. You've got these BF Goodrich off-road tyres on black Rhino wheels. There's a choice of designs of those. And then, well, the detailing is immense. RP fit their own body kit, which even has a little cutout for the step. And your sliding door, well, you just pull the handle and it opens electrically. Then you've got these carbon finish panels around the windows. All the glazing nice and flush with the vehicle's sides. Moving towards the back, you've got your TV point so you can plug in a satellite dish there, either for TV inside the van or for TV outside. External barbecue point, of course, as well. But now we come to what makes this van really special. And it's what makes this motorhome different from every other Mercedes Sprinter motorhome on the market. But I'm gonna keep you in suspense a bit longer because there's lots more to tell you about this fabulous bit of kit. Now, you'll have spotted the water drains waste and fresh. The waste tank is 100 litres under slung, but it's heated and insulated, and the heating goes right the way through. All the piping, everything's insulated for proper winter use. And just to show how this van has been designed for serious use away from campsite facilities, you've got 200 litres of fresh water in two separate tanks, 100 litres each, one on each side to keep the weight, dis weight distribution exactly right. Fresh water fillers here, but because that's a bit high and perhaps you can't get to fill up very conveniently, there's a 12 volt socket here. Just plug in a submersible pump into your fresh water container, whatever carrier you've got, and fill the tank that way. And of course, your cassette toilet emptying is there too. Down the back here, you've got your mains point and your filler for your gas tank. Now that's 30 litres of LPG underneath the vehicle and that should last well about 100 years because all that serves is the, the hob and the oven. Heating is by diesel. Now you've probably spotted also that there's a small ladder stuck to the side of the van. It um, clips to the vehicle magnetically, it folds away ever so neatly, just telescopically folds and then goes in the back of the van and They've even thought of a proper grab handle to help you get up here. You've got RP's own design of roof rack on the top with two lay crossbars. You've also got access to the roof through the roof light at the back of the vehicle. It's even hinged the other way so you can get out of there onto the roof. And you've got a 115 watt solar panel up here too with the option of a second solar panel. I told you the back of this van was different. Look at it. Gone are the original Mercedes barn doors and instead it's been completely redesigned by RP. I love that opening section in the lounge upstairs but this is what makes it special and what makes this a proper motorhome. A real full-size garage You've got your ladder stored over here. You've got 12 volt and 230 volt power there. And I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but in a van conversion, you have a fully functioning washing machine. Yep, you heard that right. This is a washing machine. It just plugs 
into the water supply for the external shower. Then over here at the back of the garage, you have an ARB air compressor. You can pump up your tires, your inflatable kayak, anything you need. Apparently they are the best in the business. You've also got your water tanks in here, one either side. And then if I move over a little bit in this door, you have a three kilowatt inverter. So you don't need to be hooked up to the mains. You can run everything off your 12 volt supply in the van. And that is cooled by the air conditioning system. You've got a good half a tonne of payload in here, depending on the spec. Pop the door down and doesn't it all look neat? It could have come from Mercedes Benz like that. You've got your reversing camera up top and a dash cam that records front and rear. So if some idiot crashes into you, you can prove it was them. And don't worry about anybody nicking your valuable mountain bikes that you've got in there because you've got these extra security locks on either side. Of course, base vehicle is the Mercedes Sprinter. This is a 319. Um, Rebellion X is on the, that you've seen the blue one, that's on the 519, so that's a five ton chassis. You can have left-hand drive, right-hand drive, but the really interesting thing, there's new engines coming. This is the last of the V6s. They will have the same power with the new four-cylinder two-liter engine. But the new engines are claimed to be more economical and quieter, so that should be really good news. And the automatic gearbox goes from seven speeds to nine. But I really can't criticize this van. It's super smooth, it's effortless, it performs really, really well. When you put your foot down or you come to a steep hill, it's got loads of go. Ten and a quarter inch MBUX display, of course, with the Sprinter, which not only gives you the sat nav, it gives you that really clever sort of helicopter view when you're manoeuvring. Great for, well, it's a seven metre van, it's not huge, but when you're manoeuvring, it's a big plus. You've got sensors all around, so you're never going to hit anything. Yeah, it's just a great vehicle to drive. Um, parking brake is a little switch, so you've got no handbrake in the way when you're swivelling seats. Yeah, it's lovely. So we've parked up, but we're not particularly level because we're on a field. So Marve levelling system, press the auto down button and the jacks will come down and make us nice and level for our night stop. You don't need to worry about grass, you've got four wheel drive, and you don't need to worry about being on a campsite. But when you do find a great spot to stop, even a seven metre van, sometimes you want a bit more space.
though we should have pegged out of course but to show you just how much extra space you get look at it it's like the conservatory on your house four and a half meters long 2.4 meters wide look how much extra space you get So we've created an extra room on the side, but we can also create an extra room on the back with an outside shower. Shower curtain just stores neatly in that special shelf. And with four simple clips, you've got an external shower cubicle. Zip gives you access. You've got a special bracket, fix, fixes to the tailgate to hold your shower head and hot and cold water from the Trima Combi 6 diesel powered boiler. Just put a kid's paddling pool in the bottom and you won't even get the ground wet. Now you might think having seen that big garage outside that you'd be stuck with yet another fixed bed layout as with most garage vehicles but no this rebellion from rp has a big rear lounge look at you got nice u-shaped sofa plenty of room the side sections are each well over six foot long and a really comfortable space to put your feet up 21 and a half inch aftex tv at the foot of this sofa Plenty of uh, fresh air coming in through that big roof light above. And remember, this is the one that you can climb out onto the roof. But that's just part of it. Want more fresh air or more feeling of that outside space? Just move the cushions around. And now, well, you could sit across the van. And well, you can't imagine a much more peaceful view than that. got plenty of lighting too, reading lights in the corners. You've got speakers for the stereo, which is a separate stereo for the living area. Speakers front and rear for that. You've got these useful shelves above. Um, more storage under the sofas. A drawer on each side. Drawer for your drawers, perhaps. And then you've got access on either side into the garage. More storage under here, under the floor, um, even a built-in safe. And below here, at floor level, is the Truma Saphir uh, air conditioning unit mounted nice and low, so you haven't got something, a big heavy weight on the roof. Much better for weight distribution down there. And of course, at night, this whole area becomes your main bedroom. You could just use the settees as single beds, but making a double takes a matter of seconds. This section of slats simply glides out and then these two backrest cushions slot in one atop the other. And now you've got a huge bed, 1.67 meters wide, the full width of the van, 1.8 eight seven meters wide on this side and 1.96 meters over on the near side and the detailing is lovely look at these molded panels on the sides and around the windows around the rear hatch the detailing really is lovely and i like this headlining as well the way it's done in strips across the vehicle the whole vehicle feels beautifully finished So this is only a seven metre van conversion, but it's a full four berth. Now, first thing to do is to remove the mattress. Undo two clasps, lower it down. You've got a nice safety net if you've got very young children going in there. 
and then it's all held in place with these seatbelt clasps into the original Mercedes-Benz seatbelt position. Might not be quite big enough for me, but 1.53 metres by 0.76, plenty for most teenagers. And then the fourth bed makes up in the lounge area. You get your table out of the wardrobe, and then your backrest from the rear travel seat, and the armrest slots in underneath to make it complete. There will be a support for it between the two cab seats. And then the armrests from the rear lounge. Just enough room for an adult to go diagonally. So your space at the back is your real lounge area for feet up sprawling and at the front you've got a second seating area. Do remember this is a seven meter panel van. So you've got your rear travel seats, front seats spin round and make your second lounge little coffee table we've got in position here that can also go in the rear lounge if you want a table back there and then there's a the main dining table just clips to the wall here in the usual style we saw that as part of the front bed makeup either way it gives you a choice of seating areas maybe one for mum and dad one for the kids or one for sprawling one for sitting up having a drink cup of tea playing cards, board games, whatever, it does give you more versatility to the lounge areas. Where do I start with this kitchen? Because in a panel van, you seem to have everything. You've got two gas burners and an induction hob. You've got an oven. You've got two fridges. You've got worktop everywhere. Well, let's go through it. You've got Corian worktop and an extension. You've got a chopping board cover on the underside of the sink and the sink is a proper domestic size with a proper domestic type outlet. You've got three really good size kitchen drawers so you won't be fumbling around trying to feel at the back of a cupboard. You've got an 85 litre compressor fridge and then at the other end of the kitchen you've got a 35 litre compressor fridge but that fridge is a little bit special because you can turn the whole thing into a freezer it'll go down to minus 20 degrees or you can turn the temperature back up again and just use it as a wine and beer cooler, whatever you need. Then back here, you've got the Thetford duplex oven and grill mounted at a pretty sensible and convenient height with a bit of worktop above it. And at this point, you might be thinking, oh, what a shame you haven't got worktop here. But actually you have, because you've got a slide out worktop as well as all this space above and even a little oddments shelf. So is certainly not short of worktop. And then, well, some of the accessories. You've got this Max Air roof vent, all operated on remote control. It blows in air, it sucks air out. You can set it to come on at a preset temperature. Maybe you've left a pet in here and you just pop into the shop. You can set it to come on and cool the van a little if uh, if you're worried about that sort of thing. And then the electrics, well, in this van, you've got two 200 amp hour lithium batteries. That's a slight upgrade over the standard spec, which is two 160 amp hour lithium batteries. But of course, with the inverter on board as well, you can run your air conditioning. Now, it's all controlled with this little device here. Everything electrical is from Victron. And then you've got this lovely little touch screen that just shows how how much power using where it's coming from and all that sort of stuff and you can set this 
So if you're on a French or Spanish campsite and you haven't got a lot of amperage from the site mains hookup, you can just boost it with that so that you don't trip out the site electrics and become the most unpopular person on the whole campsite. Opposite the kitchen, you've got a small wardrobe that's home to both the tables. And then above that, more Corian worktop, of course, and your Krups coffee machine. I don't go anywhere without a decent cup of coffee. The stereo that I mentioned that gives you speakers front and rear, a couple of USB ports. Well, I think we've got everything covered. Sliding door to the washroom means you won't disturb the chef too much. And then inside, well, you could think it's all fairly standard. Bench cassette, Thetford toilet, corner wash basin, opening window is a good feature, of course. And then you start to notice the details. More Corian worktop. A second blind to waterproof the main window blind. Two lockable cabinets with mirrors, soap dispenser, Somewhere for your toothbrushes, towel hooks, both sides, and a rail to hang maybe a wetsuit or something. And you don't need a shower curtain. You've got bifold doors. And then there's even a little vent at the top right next to your Max Air extractor. So because they couldn't get a vent actually directly over the, the shower, all your steamy air should suck out through there. So you've seen the luxury on board, let's go and have some fun. The Rebellion is RP's best motorhome yet. It has everything you need for off-grid living and is designed for serious off-road driving. Leave tarmac and campsites behind and set off on a real adventure.